Hi, welcome to my video called God's Instructions, How Illogical. Now, you're, you're probably thinking God's instructions being illogical. How is that possible? Now, if you're coming from this, from the world's point of view, God's instructions are crazy. They're labeled nuts. They're labeled ludicrous. And you know, possibly by a lot of believers who are not walking in the spirit, who know nothing of faith and are just focused on their worldly daily routine of success and making money. And so anybody that follows that route, they're going to look at God's instructions to somebody personally as idiotic, you know, stupid, like I said, ludicrous. So let's get right to it. Um, according to man, uh, you're following man's advice and man's logic. Man going is going to think that the successful man and the successful man's ideals is logical. This is the pattern that every man has to follow. And every man that is not following it, of course, if you've seen my previous videos, you're going to know my position on this and what I think. And basically what I think is that, you know, anybody that looks at somebody with that's walking by faith is, you know, stupid and crazy. You're going to look at them as illogical. And anybody that doesn't follow the path of the successful is considered so. So, like I said, man's thinking is logical. Anything outside that realm is illogical. Um, he has control or tries to have control over his life, over his finances, over his job, over all that he owns. And basically, you know, the, the fault comes when this is proven wrong, whether tragedy or an unfortunate circumstance happens and in which he, he loses his money. Um, Man plans his course. He has dates set to when business meetings happen and uh, when he's going to meet with clients or he has vacations set after a certain amount of time. Um, he has his whole life set, you know, a goal of 10 or 20 or 30 years, you know, what he's planning ahead. Um, like I said, his goal is to be successful making money, making wise financial decisions. Um, he won't pursue anything that would go against that logic. You know, uh, it's considered foolish to somebody that is successful to walk in faith for something because that will interfere with his, his finances. You know, he, do, he doesn't want to be labeled as a failure. Um, he, you know, I don't know much about the whole financial portfolio and stuff, but it's my guess that he doesn't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize that. Uh, he's going to want to make, like I said, wise decisions according to those that have mentored him and stuff like that. So, you know, if he's a believer and, um, he truly desires to follow God. This is going to be something that is going to come against his uh, financial know-how. And it would put him into a place of having to answer to his mentors. And they're going to be asking him, why are you doing this? Why are you pursuing this route? This is crazy. You know, don't you realize you could either lose your house and you know, jeopardize the well-being of your family by pursuing your faith. Um, let's see. Uh, like I said, you know, I already had said he already pursues safety and comfort when it comes to um, his finances. So anything that, you know, if God leads him into following him, then he has to deal with that circumstance of, What's he going to do about his job? What's he going to do about his house? You know, because you don't know what God has planned for somebody. And I'm not saying that 
it could be true for all people that God wants them to seek him wholeheartedly and go where he wants them to go. You know, I'm not saying that's possibly true for everyone. Um, it just depends on what God has said. If you're willing to surrender your life to God, then you don't know what God has planned for you specifically. Now, of course, this next part, I really didn't change. Um, I wrote this when I was falling asleep one night. <laughs> but uh, God's instructions will be considered according to the world illogical and according to man's logic. But this is where man, man's fault lies. He doesn't know what God can do. And somebody of the world, I can't expect them to know what God can do because they don't. But somebody that is a believer that has read the word should know what God can do. And so, um, number one, God sees what's ahead. You know, if God is calling someone to, you know, trust him, then God knows what path that person needs to take. And it relies on that believer to seek God. And if God knows the future, then doesn't that seem like a smart thing to do? Let's see. God knows the hearts of men and everything about them. That's another point. God knows the paths he leads us in. And lastly, God knows we need to relinquish our control to him. And since God knows the future, he knows the paths that we need to take. He knows whether or not we have control over our circumstance. He is more apt into leading us into what we need to do. And if you had seen my previous videos on learning to hear God's voice and hearing God's voice is crucial, God can lead you personally into what he wants you to do. He knows where your control lies and where you need to relinquish that control. And so, according to the world, that's stupid. But according to God, that's wise. Because if God knows the future. He knows what paths we need to take and what choices we need to make. And leading on to the next point is that God is safe. If God knows the future, his instructions should be something we can follow without concern. Now, a good examples of this are in the book of Acts when God told Ananias to go to Saul, a man who formerly persecuted Christians and had them put to death, and he wanted Ananias to go and pray for him because Saul was blind. And if you know the story, Saul went in, went into uh, to get letters, you know, to continue to persecute Christians, and then Jesus appeared to him in a a blinding light until Saul was blind. And so God foretold Saul that he was going to send somebody to him to heal him. And so Ananias healed him. But before he healed him, uh, Ananias, after God told him to go to Saul, Ananias said, but don't you realize that, you know, this man has persecuted your followers and you know, fellow believers and, and God, it's like Ananias had to remind God of, you know, about this man. God knew what was going on. God knew, you know, exactly what was in Saul's heart. So Ananias was not in jeopardy. But I don't know why as we believers feel like we need to remind God of any circumstances that we are facing. God has the bigger picture. God knows what's going to happen in our lives, so we don't need to remind God of that. So, uh, another example is uh, Moses in the Red Sea. You know, sometimes we, since we don't know the future, we're not going to know what's happening. But Moses was at the Red Sea, and God op opened it up. But I'm sure, you know, a lot of people are wondering what he was doing, and what he was doing was crazy. And you know, God knew exactly what he was going to do and um, what was going to happen. And
another thing is man will not let God lead them because they fear they'll look foolish. And sometimes, you know, we as believers will tend to do that. Um, it's like we're afraid of what people are going to think of us if we give them a word from God or in my circumstance, a lot of people would intend to trust God solely by faith because they're afraid of what people are going to say about them and the harsh criticism and the ridicule. So that's another reason why, you know, man will think God's instructions are illogical because how many would actually do what I had done, trusting God by faith? Not many will because number one, their jobs, number two, you know, their, their finances. So, and that's where, if you're a believer, that's where the real lack of trust can come in. You should know as a believer that God is your source. And if you don't know, then you really have some soul searching to do because really you're, you're depending on your own strength. You're not depending on God. And so, you know, this, this change really has to be made on, until, you know, uh, God forbid a disaster circumstance could take your job or whatever you're depending on. So you really need to re refocus. Um, man thinks he knows better than God. You know, you get all these financial people that are surrounding the, the rich believers. And so the rich believers would tend to listen to the, the wealthy mentors more than God. And we know more than God. Uh, no, God knows more than us. Sorry. I I tend to do that. I mess up what I say sometimes. So, you know, God knows more than we do. So, uh, lastly on this point is um, man has always controlled his life. So, you may ask, how is God safe? And here are some... the uh, some points to prove. Look at how he promised man things and came through. For example, Abraham, he was well beyond his age, along with his wife to even have kids, but God said that she will give birth to a son when Jesus and two angels were visiting Abraham. And then Sarah laughed because she thought, how am I supposed to have a, a child at my old age? And even my husband, who is, you know, beyond childbearing age, you know, having a child. So that's one example. Another is Elijah. And if you've seen my other videos, you know the examples I give because they are good examples. Elijah at the brook. God knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew that the, the famine was going to dry up the brook. And so he would lead him to a widow. But God knew exactly what was going to happen. You know, uh, Elijah was there and he was probably wondering when his food was going to come. But according to man's, uh, according to man, you know, he's going to fear because he's wondering when this is going to happen. But God knows, God knew when he was going to send the ravens to feed him. So that's another example. And then the Israelites in the desert, you know, according to man, you're going to fear about eating and drinking. But God knew what was he, he was going to have Moses do, and it was going to speak to the rock for it to flow water, and then he was going to cause manna to come. And so, and not only that, but quail. So that's another example proving that God is safe. Um, the same with Saul. I, I had already given the example of Saul and Ananias. From Saul's uh, viewpoint, he was probably wondering when his, um, you know, his his sight was going to be restored, and so he sent Ananias. And then, from Ananias's point of view, knowing that Saul was a murderer, and God was sending Ananias to Saul, so God showed him that you know he was safe, and there was nothing he needed to worry about when it came to Saul. And, you know, Jesus, another example, uh, he told his disciples some things that were going to happen before they were. Number one being that his death 
Uh, number two, Peter denying him. Number three, Judas being uh, one that was going to betray him, even though the disciples didn't know that at the time. Um, he knew about the donkey that he was going to ride on, that uh, he told the, example, the disciples exactly what was going to happen event after event to prove. So all these things, you know, God was showing us that he is safe. His instructions are safe. He's not unaware of, you know, things that are happening around us. He knows exactly what is happening around us, and he will guide us if we're willing to listen to him. Now, of course, the world is not going to hear God. Uh, the, the world is going to think it's stupid. I've had to deal that with that many times in my life. Family members saying exactly what I was hearing was not right. And I even had to have a conversation with a family member that thought my faith walk was uh, absolutely stupid and uh, ridiculous. And even my cousin has to deal with that same thing now where, you know, she's surrounded by family members that think uh, her dependence on God is stupid. So, you know, it's going to happen in this world, but we believers that are trusting in God need to not be moved and fully rely on him. And, you know, believers, you can hear God's voice if you're willing to listen to him. It just takes time to hear it. Now, if you want to hear it, Check out my voice, uh, check out my uh, the video that is called Learning to Hear God's Voice. Now, God's instructions will interfere with your logic. Um, like, you know, the points that I have given before, and you know exactly how the world operates in logic. But if you're a Star Wars fan, that you need to take Yoda's advice when he said you need to unlearn what you have learned. If you're truly following God and want to follow him, you have to get rid of everything that you've learned in this world, according to how to make money, finances, and all that. Consider that rubbish. That's what, you know, Apostle Paul said. I consider my previous life before knowing Christ rubbish. Now, I'm not saying that you need to you know, discard all the know-hows on making money. Who knows if God, you know, eventually will allow you to use that for his purpose. But I'm just saying right now you need to scrap everything that you've learned from this world and listen to God. Relearn from him what you need to learn. Um, now, examples of how God's instructions would interfere with our logic. You have Esther marrying a foreign king when it was unlawful for her to marry outside of Israel. And that's in Deuteronomy 7.3. Let me see if I can find it. All right, it says, furthermore, you shall not intermarry with them. You shall not give your daughters to their sons, nor shall you take their daughters for your sons. For they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. Then the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you, and he will quickly destroy you. Now, you know, God knew exactly how Israel was going to be saved through Queen Esther. So, God does not live by the laws that he gives us. He is the one that created us. And so therefore we live by his laws. He is the potter. We are the clay. You know, so if God wants to preserve his people going against his word, then he, he's going to do that. Now, I'm not saying it's a whole contradiction, but I'm just saying that it is God who creates you know, he created us, so therefore he can tell us what he wants us to do. And so he's going to preserve through um, 
any means necessary, his children. And that's exactly what he did. Another example, uh, Exodus 16, verses 16. Okay, 16, verses 16 to 20. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it every man as much as he should eat. You shall take an omer. Did I even write? Okay. You shall take an omer apiece according to the number of persons each of you have, has in his tent. The sons of Israel did so, and some gathered much and some little. Then they measured it with an omer. He who had gathered much had no excess, and he who had gathered little had no lack. Every man gathered as much as he should eat. Moses said to them, Let no man leave any of it until morning. But they did not listen to Moses, and some left part of it until morning. And they bred worms and became foul, and Moses was angry with them. So the Israelites gathered more manna than what they were supposed to. Some gathered what they were told, and but some tr lacked trust in God and gathered more. And that God was proving that uh, you need to trust me. So a lot of people didn't trust God, so they gathered more than they, what they should have because they wanted some for the next day so that they didn't have to do it again. But God caused it to, you know, rot. So, another example is Genesis 12, verse 1. Now, the Lord said to Abraham, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And so, you know, I'm sure Abraham lived securely with his dad and his family, you know, lots of animals and just pure comfort. But God called him away from that, out of his comfort zone and into a land he would show him. And so from that moment on, Abraham walked in true faith with God and trusted him wholeheartedly. Uh and then, you know, God promising in Genesis 18, 10 to Abraham that he would have a son. Uh, let's see, Gideon and the fleece, Judges 6, 40. Okay, let me um, read this. Now, this is about the fleece. Then Gideon said to God, If you will deliver Israel through me as you have spoken, behold, I will put a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece only, it is dry on the, and it is dry on all the ground, then I will know that you will deliver Israel through me as you have spoken. And it was so. When he arose early the next morning and squeezed the fleece, he drew he drained the dew from the fleece, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, Do not let your anger burn against me, that I may speak once more. Please let me make a test once more with the fleece. Let it be now be dry only on the fleece, and let there be dew on all the ground. God did so that night, for it was dry only on the fleece, and the dew was on all the ground. So God God knew exactly what he was going to do. And he was showing Gideon that he was safe, that his instructions were safe, and that God was someone he could rely on. And the same with Abraham. Abraham learned that God was safe and his instructions were safe. 
And, you know, the Israelites learned that, you know, the, God was going to take care of them with the manna and the quail. And, you know, Moses knew exactly, and he started gaining more and more faith in God. Now, if God gives you instructions, follow them and don't listen to man's logic. You know, that, that's what man wants you to do is to follow the logical mind. And following God's way is not logical, according to man. But God knows the future, like I had said. So his instructions is... What's that word? Uh, his instructions are more trustworthy than man's since God knows the future and everything else. Um, you know, a lot of believers, when receiving God's instructions, they can somehow talk themselves out of hearing God, you know, and following his instructions. For example, there might be somebody that God wants you to pray for, but then because of fear of how that person's going to respond, they're going to be like, uh, maybe I didn't hear from God. Maybe it was, you know, just myself. And so they drive on, leaving that person behind them when they should have prayed for them. So basically, this is the video, uh, God's instructions, how illogical. I hope that proved that God can be trusted if we're allowing ourselves to trust him in that um man's instructions are only according to his their comfort they're not going to want to choose anything that is ridiculous because of not only the people around them but because of fear of failure so uh, i pray that what i had showed you you know opened your eyes to how god can be trustworthy trustworthy if we allow him so, dear God, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters. Lord, I ask that you would lead them in to knowing how safe you are and how ins your instructions are safe. So, God, if there are any people that are wanting to trust you, Lord, let them be guided solely by your voice. And, Lord, I ask that you would show them that you're safe through Scripture. It, they don't have to listen to what I say. Let them listen to you and guide them in, in, in your word. To help them know so god i just pray blessings over you know each of my hearers right now i pray this in the name of jesus amen thanks for watching and stay tuned